here is where your brain is sabotaging you and you know what you're wanting to do but you keep drawing it and it keeps feeling flat and it keeps not coming out looking like what you think it should look like so what is going on here why is this not working why does yours feel flat and this one does not now what's going on with yours particularly is during this process where you're looking at your reference the information is coming in you're processing it and then out comes your drawing on the other side but this is where your brain is sabotaging you it is manipulating the information without you really being aware of it you me everybody will start out as cute little babies one of the first things that we humans need to be able to identify recognize and understand is the face it starts recognizing a pattern it holds a pattern of what a face it has this idea that okay a face is like this and there is eyes there is a nose uh, there is a mouth we have ears we have hair and the brain is so good at trying to find this pattern that we uh, we see faces in clouds we see faces in pools of water like oh that kind of looks like a face you know it, that's what your brain is doing it is looking for this pattern anything that even kind of looks like that whether it's actually human or not but what this is doing is it is interjecting itself into that processing right this is where the face pattern is coming in and messing with you the face pattern is very simple it is a very simplified version of the face and it has a couple of hallmarks so let's take a look at it i created what i think is a fairly accurate mental version of a face template so here's a photo of myself now i would like to think oh yeah this is my visual memory this is you know the clarity of my visual memory it's not people don't remember that much detail they don't remember that much accuracy that much nuance any of that sort of thing our face template is more like this see the characteristics that that mental template is that our brain holds is what is seeping into your image so we have to learn to ignore its information and look only at the reference so we want to know what the characteristics are of this uh, then we're going to see where that is playing into your drawing and i will show you the markers of it in your drawing so that i know what's actually going on hallmarks is outlines see the template is inherently line based that is it delineates edges with a marker line uh, the same way that you would divide up a map and say oh this is one state or this is one country it delineates this is an eye this is not an eye number two is that the proportions i'll say imprecise the things that they usually get off is that the eyes are too high and you notice that i moved the eyes up because people usually overestimate how high the eyes are in the head orthogonal that means at right angle so it is completely flat 90 degrees to our viewing angle this is important it really plays into your piece see anything that is almost orthogonal the brain will snap to being orthogonal and we're seeing that with yours the whole of the face is slightly turned but yet what your brain is doing is twisting it back so that it's completely straight and it matches that mental template people are stuck in drawing portraits directly from the front with no turn and no angle because that matches their mental template and that's what they're comfortable with the value range is we'll call it subjective is probably one of the best ways to say it it is judged by element not as a whole we have light on the cheek and then we see a shadow and then we see more light okay over here we have light on the cheek we see a shadow and we see more light so the pattern remains correct but the values are completely wrong 
I'll just get this value and I'll apply it over here. Look at the difference. See, this is where your brain is sabotaging you. So it's going, I'm mimicking the pattern because it's excellent at pattern recognition, but it's terrible at judging this against that. So it has a tendency to do what we'll call a uh, tunnel vision. It is tunnel vision where it's just looking at the pattern and not thinking about how it affects anything else. It wants to use all the value range for everything. But what it does is it equates light to white and shadow to black. We need to be aware that that is what your brain is trying to do, but that is not what's going on. So we want to test it. We want to really look at it and do some studies and say, okay, well, let's look at this. And look how dark it is. This is, you know, white. And we'll call this, you know, 0%. And we'll call this 100% black down here. Well, that's like 90. But over here, if we look at it, that is what? 50s here? 55? I don't even think you're to 60. Maybe 60? So we're talking about a three value range jump between the two of those. And same thing with this uh, nasal fold. I mean, if we look at this, we're running at 20%. And over here, if we look at it, we've got, what, 60? So we're talking about a four value range jump. Now let's look at some of the other ones, the outline. You see this playing out in several parts of the features. Uh, we'll start with the eyebrow. In, in a way, it's outlined because it is over delineating the edge in a harsh way. Well, the eyebrow actually has a very soft edge to it, and there is no clear outline. This is a really, really key area right here to pay attention to. There is no line right there, but yet we have a black line right here. And you have to really take your time, slow down, and be asking yourself, what is that value? Now we'll do a little paint over here in a minute and see about how to apply these things. But before we jump into that, we want to do a proper analysis so that we understand. Now I think the lips are telling us perhaps the most information. It's kind of the most of those issues going on at once. Have a nearly black edge along the bottom. We compare that, right? Nothing. In fact, that's practically a lost edge over here. It just bleeds. It is orthogonal. So this no longer has a sense of form. Now I'm looking at this. Let's do a little, a little drawing here. We want to think about this in the terms of the form because it might help us sketch it out more accurately. And if we can think of it in terms of 3D, then we can notice better if it's wrong. Now, I'm going to start by looking at that angle, right? Uh, then I'm looking at the fact that this is a volume. Essentially, this is two, uh, two angles, right? Doing this sort of thing. And so you jump back and forth. Whichever one is going to be more accurate and get you to the best result the fastest is the one you want to do. But if you're having uh, trouble getting the accurate shape, then think about it in terms of form. How do you go against this? How do you learn to transition between? One, we start by understanding what's going on. We understand what that template looks like. We understand how to look for some of the markers of that in our artwork so that we can uh, be picking up on it. One of the first things I want to do is actually just make this a little bit smaller. Uh, like the top of her head is getting really close up there to the top. Something else with the template is that the template in your mind is all about the face, does not hold very much information at all about the hair. So people often will get the size of the hair wrong. So let's measure things out a little bit. If we look at kind of where that hair is coming by the eye, and then the edge of the hair is kind of coming out to about there. Well, if we look at this distance, that looks like about the same distance as to the center of the nose. But if we look over here and we go, okay, well, it comes down to about the center of the nose. So if we get to this, to this, and we look at this distance, whoa, that means that the hair needs to come out to here. So the hair is less than half of the width. So we want to make sure that the hair is accurate. And we get the uh, sort of the edge of the visual face there. We look at it to this side. And we want to compare that distance to over here. I'd say it's about to the inside of that iris. That hair needs to come out to at least there. Okay, so let's do a quick change on that then. Now let's start looking at some of the things going on in the face. The angle. This is going up. 
from the outside is low, inside is up. We have the opposite, outside is high, inside is low. This is because you're used to seeing the eyebrows dropping. So you're looking at it here, your brain goes, eyebrow, I know what an eyebrow is, and it draws what it thinks an eyebrow is. It's not drawing that eyebrow, it's drawing your idea of an eyebrow. And I'm constantly saying this in a lot of the videos is don't draw your idea of the thing, draw the thing. This is your idea of an eyebrow. This is your brain's interpretation of it. That's not what we want to draw. We want to draw this actual eyebrow, this specific one. Uh, same thing with the mouth. We don't want to draw a mouth. We want to draw that mouth. And that mouth has a particular set of angles and particular set of values. So let's adjust that. Uh, let's adjust this eye. There is no black line down there. This is another one of the template. Your, your idea of the white of the eye is that it is much lighter than it actually is, especially over here. Like the white of that eye is not even really distinguishable. So this is, we need to draw what we see, not what we know. There's times in where your reference is not good or you need to create something that is fantastical and you don't have a reference for it, so you do need to rely on what you know to supplement what you uh, have reference for. But in this case, you basically have all the information that you actually need. So we don't need to be modifying it other than to slightly stylize it and simplify it. We're gonna just block in a new mouth. And the whole chin needs to shift over, right? And we can do some guidelines to check that. The lowest part of the chin, kind of the center, is right about there, running it up. It's not far from that. It's inside the shadow. So in this case, we're checking shapes against shapes. I can run that down. See, the center of the chin needs to move from about there to there. And I know that this side needs to move out. Now, right now, we actually have this lower part slightly lighter than this part. And that's reversed in the image. So I can see that on this side, this side of the lips is slightly lighter. So I'm going to lighten that up. This part right there is actually turning out towards the light more. Uh, and then knowledge of things like the forms of the face and the angles of the face is going to give you better observational skills as to what information to pay attention to. For I know that there is a angle right there where the brow arch meets in with the forehead and I want to develop a better sense of the form in the face to keep it from feeling flat. Now, I don't have time to go into detailing all of this, but hopefully you can kind of see how this is developing. And I know that this is a plane of the face, and this is where you're adding in a little knowledge to know what to accentuate and not to. So I want to help develop the sense of form by playing in that. And we're looking at this angle change here. Uh, this is coming out far too much. You can look at this curve. And when I look at it, I look at it and I imagine tracing it. I imagine drawing that curve with my mind. I imagine drawing it with my hand so that when I get over here, I kind of mimic it again with my mind and with my hand so that I can more closely follow it. So that feels better. Now the photo is getting really contrasty. Uh, you probably want to make some slight variations to pull out some of the information in there instead of letting it get so dark. But here we're implementing steps in order to offset that mental template that your brain is, keeps trying to put into the image. Hopefully it's getting closer here. Okay, a lot to uh, cover on that one. Really good topic. Uh, I really hope that you found this helpful. And if anybody needs further uh, feedback on a particular piece or you have specific questions you want to talk to me, uh, art-mentor.com, just schedule an hour consult and we will go over whatever you need to. All right, well, best of luck on this one, and until you see you next time, keep drawing.